Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our Fundamentals of Cybersecurity workshop today. We are so excited to have Jennifer, one of our curriculum developers, be here to go through some lessons with you in our cybersecurity course, give you a lot of awesome information on this course. If you want to take a, a minute to introduce yourself into the chat, we're going to be using the chat as we go through our lesson today. So you can um, introduce yourself, just say who you are, where you're located, and if you're new to Code HS or new to the cybersecurity course, that would be awesome. We love to see who's here. And we are going to get started in about a minute. We have still some people joining us, so we want to make sure we have everyone in here before we can get going. So if you can find that chat, awesome. I see Sagar from Wisconsin, new to this course, awesome. Awesome, David, new to this course as well. Awesome. Wow, lots of people here looking for, looking to teach cybersecurity for the first time. That is great. All right, and also we're gonna drop a link into the chat. Um, if you could just click through this attendance link, that would really help us keep track of of who's here and that's that's all it does it just links that you are here so it shouldn't ask you for for too much information or anything like that um we can put that into the chat even though the chat is blowing up a little bit <laughs> so if you want to just type in as well codehs.com slash cyber dash attendance you'll get to that link awesome thanks mr just drop that in there All right. And a reminder, if you are um, only able to stay for the first hour or you know something comes up, um, you are going to receive this recording. So um, don't don't worry, don't fret if you know I know that there are always things that are are coming up. All right. So we are going to get started. We have lots of people in here, lots of people new to cybersecurity. And we have an awesome um, document that's going to help us as we go through today, um, our cyber workbook. And we are going to um, send that link in the chat. We'll also remind you again about that, that workbook so that you know where you can find all the information for today. Um, my name is Julia Trigo, and I, um, during the school year, am a teacher in uh, Northern Virginia, in a high school in Virginia, and um, I used to work for Code HS on the curriculum team. Um, I am back now during the summer working for the PD team um, to work to bring teachers like you all this awesome content that's, that Code HS has. Um, we are joined by Jennifer Campbell, who is our um, developer for the cybersecurity course. And she's going to go through all of this awesome content today, go through some sample lessons to show you how you can bring this course to your students. And we also have MR here who is joining us um, for support. So any questions that you have, she is going to be working on the back end to get you all the links that you, you need, any information, any answers to your questions. And we're going to have a specific um, place for you to put those questions so that they don't get lost in the chat. So let's take a look at that. So if you have any questions today throughout our um, session, you can put them right into our question parking lot document, which is going to be at cyber, cyber dash, dash questions. We have the link right in the chat. And this is going to be a much better place for you to ask your questions rather than in the chat here because we don't want to lose anything. As you saw during our introductions, um, we have a lot of participants here and more people are, are just coming in. So 
let's make sure to put those questions in the parking lot. You can also ask these at any time. So if already you have a question, go right in. You can put that in. As Jennifer goes through the content in the course, if something sparks in your brain, you don't have to wait until the end. Just throw it right in there. And we will be working to get you answers to all of those questions. And it's a lot easier for us to give you direct links with um, expanded information in that document. So make sure that you have that document open on the side. All right. So we have, like we had said, we have this workbook today, which is an awesome resource for you. So we know that as we go through these workshops, there's a lot of links, there's a lot of places we want you to go and things to look at. So we're gonna drop that link in the chat one more time because this is a really important document that will have links to everything else. It will have your link to your question document. It will have links at, that you'll need as we go through our lessons today. So this is a really, really good resource for you um, to be able to follow along with today's presentation. So definitely have that open on the side so you have access to all of that information. All right. If you need to join CodeHS, if you don't have an account yet, you can easily make one right at CodeHS.com slash sign up and make sure you join as a teacher. You will um, put in some information about your school and your account will get verified so that you'll have access to all of the teacher information on CodeHS, all the solutions, all the resources, all of those things. Um, if you already have an account, you could go ahead and log in. We're going to be joining a demo course today. Um, and if you don't have an account yet, but you're not sure, you know, you want to just sit back and watch, that is totally fine. Um, you can just be an observer for today's session and then you can sign up uh, later once you're, you're ready. All right. So the demo course that we are going to use is going to be right here at codehs.com slash go. And then we have this code. So we're going to throw that link into the chat and the code, when you need to enter the code, it's those last five digits, 2E2DC. And this is the same way that your students join sections on CodeHS. So you are going to be joining our demo section as a student today. And so you're going to be able to see the content, um, the CodeHS content as a, as a student and then shift and put your teacher hat and think about how you can use this content as a teacher. So if you can join that demo course, that would be awesome. That link is also on our workbook as well as our question documents. You can find that in a lot of places. And remember, if you need that code, it's just the last five digits. All right, let's see what we're going to cover today. Okay. So we are going to start, we did our check-in, then we're going to get an overview of this course. What does this course entail? It's a little bit different from many of the other courses you may have already used on CodeHS. Um, it is definitely um, less programming than those because it it's a different focus of computer science. So we're gonna see what does that course entail and how is um, that content given to the students? Then Jennifer is going to lead us through a full cybersecurity lesson. So you're going to be in the student seats and um, engage in the content the way a student would. And then we'll debrief that lesson and look at those teacher moves that Jennifer used as she was using the, the Code HS content. And then we're going to look at another lesson in the cybersecurity course. And you're going to think about it a little bit more through the teacher lens to see some of those strategies that you can use with your students. So. One last thing before we get started is that um, our session today with Jennifer is meant for you to see how the content on CodeHS, the content and the resources and all that is available to you, all those tools, how you can use them to benefit your specific students. So if you are totally new to cybersecurity as a, as, um, a course, this course, this class, this session is not meant for you to by the end, fully understand all of those cybersecurity con uh, content and, and topics. You'll need to be able to go through some of those um, afterwards, which you are able to do on CodeHS. You can go through all of our courses, all of the content in, as, in the student shoots. 
Um, but today the goal is for you to see how can you use these things to teach your students this course. So definitely make sure you're thinking about this through the lens of a teacher, even while you're in the student's shoes. So if there's a question and you're not sure about it, or we're going through some content, don't worry because you're able to go through and learn that content um, at a later date. We just want you to see some of those awesome um, options that you have to use Code HS content to bring to your students. And at the end of today, after we take a break, after we go through the specific cybersecurity content, we're gonna take a look at the tools and resources in general that are available on Code HS for you to use. All right, so we are going to once more, I think the most important link for us to drop in the chat once more, because we did have some new people join, is that workbook link, which has a link to all of these other places. We have the question document, we have our link to join the demo course. So let's just get that link in one more time. Awesome, thanks, MR. And um, it's a really good idea, again, to have that workbook open up on your on the on the side so you can follow along with all the links and all the information that you're going to be given today. All right. Here we go. Take it away. All right. Um, we are going to get started. Um, I'm so excited to be doing this. I love cybersecurity. It's one of my favorite courses ever. And um, well, I guess that's not saying much. I used to be a math teacher and those are fun for me but they're not so great to try to teach to other people who don't like them as much. <laughs> but cyber is just such a cool, such a cool class that I, I, I wish I had a chance to actually like teach it in person. Um, but what we're gonna start off with, because I did see some of this come up in the chat, but it was hard to keep track of. Um, and I've never used one of these Slido scales um, surveys before. So hopefully it all works correctly. You have um, two options here. You can just scan that with your phone and a survey should pop up or the link is in your workbook. So in your workbook, you can, um, actually I'll show you the workbook because this QR code is in the workbook as well. Um, I'll know that you were able to get there when you choose the answer to the first question. So if you're there and you wanna choose the answer to the first question, which is have you used CodeHS before? And here's a workbook. So again, you can scan that code or click on that um, link. Let me get all of these out of the way. Oh, good. Okay, cool. I see people. Um, I'll show you guys the results in a second. But I see people um, filling it out. It means we're in the right spot. And of course, you know, if you have questions, throw them in the chat and someone will get them for you. All right, so if you're interested in what everyone is saying, although you might be able to see it in yours. Okay, this is my student, uh, my teacher view. So obviously I have. Okay, cool, so you can see it. So it looks like, um, yes, I have taught a class using Code HS, about half of us maybe. Um, and then a few others have an account and have explored, but maybe not taught a full class. Well, this is good. So maybe you guys are coming from a programming background or a different course that we offer. And now your school's um, offering cybersecurity. Which I think is such a great way to get students into computer science without all the, uh, you know, the coding can be a little difficult. All right, I'm gonna give you a second question then. Thank you for that. The second question is, what is your cybersecurity experience? So have you taught a full cybersecurity course? Have you taught maybe a little bit of cybersecurity or have you never, or just don't know much about it? I don't want to skew the results, but actually I have not taught it. So I'm going to go with this one. <laughs> All right, excellent. I'm stalling a little bit just to make sure everyone knows they're in the right spot. Plus we have a few more answers coming in. All right, so a bunch of you are in the middle. I'd say about half of you, uh, well, it's about half, it's, it's a good mix. So half of you, have a little knowledge about cybersecurity, but you haven't taught a full class. Maybe you taught a section to your students or something, or maybe it's just a, a day you touched on cybersecurity. Um, and then the other half is split. So some of you don't know much about it, and um, some of you have taught a full cyber course before. So we're a good mix in here. So hopefully we'll be able to help each other out. Um, I'll try not to go too fast, but I'll try not to drag as well. All 
All right, so I'm gonna go over the course just as a high level overview. I'm gonna to try to check the chat every once in a while, but hopefully, um, you know, if you have a, you know, a question, don't forget to put it in that parking lot. So our cybersecurity course is entirely web-based. If you've used CodeHS before, you um, know that that's kind of our thing. So students do not have to download anything. They don't have to put anything on their computer. All they need is a browser. Um, and because of that, you know, it works on Chromebooks and stuff like that. So all they need is a browser that, um, and everything will be within that browser. Uh, our, the way our courses are set up is we have learning modules, which are like your chapters or your units. And each one has a short video um, that you can also use the slides. It has examples, it has quizzes. Our cybersecurity course in specific, um, specifically has these simulations that has students um, kind of like try a cyber thing without actually, you know, getting in trouble or doing something they shouldn't do or ruining their computer if they're trying to mess with some cyber tools. Um, so we have a lot of simulations and I'll show you a bunch today. Um, and then we have some programming exercises. We do have a programming module in there, um, which is up to you if you want to keep or you know take out. Uh, it's designed for a year long class that meets five days per week. Uh, each lesson is about an hour. Some lessons are two day lessons. Uh, but schools use it in totally different ways. Some people just use a few modules and do like a quarter section or maybe like every Thursday they, they do a cybersecurity topic. Um, it's used in so many different ways. Here's our module breakdown. This is just the first couple. Uh, what we have is we start off with what is cybersecurity, which is a really good introductory module. Then we're going to go into digital citizenship and cyber hygiene. This is a module that I think is super duper important and probably should be touched on. Hopefully students have seen some of this even in middle school. Hopefully that, that's where it's going <laughs> down the road because by the time they get to middle school, they already have social media. They're already building their digital footprint. Um, but this is what that, that module is about. And then we have the programming fundamentals. So this is for two reasons. Basically, you know, to, to get into cyber, you do need to know a little bit about code. You don't necessarily need to know how to code, but basically how to pick out different pieces of it. So we expose them to programming without it being extremely programming intensive. So they don't have to uh, complete much exercises in that one. Um, more or less, they're just looking at things and exploring. And then one of my favorites is the cryptography. So this one's always fun for students too, because it's basically writing in like secret codes. And the last half of the, um, uh, the course is we have system administration, which this is a newer module. And this is where students look at operating systems. And they kind of compare, you know, Windows to Mac and stuff like that. Uh, we have software security. So students will actually run SQL injection. They'll learn about SQL injection and other things um, that come along with, uh, you know, how to keep websites safe. And networking fundamentals. This is telling them how networking works, basically. Uh, this and IT infrastructure kind of go together. So networking fundamentals, it tells you how, you know, when you request a web page, how you're able to actually see the web page and all the stuff that goes in there and of course how to keep it secure and then it in, uh, infrastructure is more about the physical parts of that so what's in a computer uh, the network cards how do uh, routers work and ethernet and wireless devices and stuff and then there are four in course projects and these are you know within some of the modules so the first one is a public service announcement. So students practice um, making a flyer or maybe a short video on something that was in that digital footprint, basically like, you know, making people aware of a cybersecurity topic. Uh, then we have the classic cipher newscast. So that's gonna be where they um, look into some other ciphers. Uh, security assessment report, this one's really cool. So students actually have a chance to work on a website that was designed to allow students to kind of mess with it. Uh, so it's it's not a secure website on purpose. And then students go through it and try, you know, a few different things. And then they write a report um, acting like they're talking to the website owner and telling them what they should fix. Uh, and then we have troubleshooting. So they go through the troubleshooting process. This goes along with like when your router or your printer is broken, printers always break. <laughs> this kind of brings them through the um, troubleshooting process to how to fix it. And then I did see this in there. I saw someone in the chat, someone was interested in cryptocurrency. So we do have that as supplemental. So we have cryptocurrency as a full supplemental um, module. And it's, it's pretty intensive. It's got like 60 lessons or something like that. So you can use just parts of it. You can use the whole thing. 
Uh, we also threw web development in there because again, if you're protecting websites, maybe you're interested in building them. So that's supplemental as well. And then SQL, where we, you know, we teach them about SQL injection and like how databases can be exposed. So if they're um, you know, interested in that, students can, uh, you can sign them up for supplemental material, which is just more information about SQL. Um, if you don't know what SQL is, SQL is a database. Sorry, I should have thrown that in there. And the cool thing is this is a line to certifications. So we have our own certification. We actually have a cybersecurity cert uh, certification through CodeHS. Um, so obviously it's aligned to that. But this course is also aligned to the CompTIA ITF Plus alignment. So ITF Plus is, um, oh man, I'm going, I'm blanking. It, fundamentals. I think it's IT fundamentals. I think that's what it is. But it's, it's designed for high schoolers who think that they may want to take future certifications. Um, there are future certifications. I mean, it goes really high. So there's some uh, like if, if you see in that paragraph there, there's there's CompTIA A+, and there's two different tests of those, and then it splits between networking specifics and security specifics. So this would be a really good first certification practice for a student um, who might be interested in learning more. And speaking of learning more, and I'll give you guys a chance, I know I'm talking a lot here, and we'll make this interactive in a second. Um, speaking of learning more, if students do wanna go further, um, we didn't put any material in here since this is a introductory type um, professional development, but we do have a full cybersecurity pathway. So we have this course, which is fundamentals of cybersecurity. And then we also offer an advanced cybersecurity um, course as well. And that advanced cybersecurity just hits more of these objectives on these certifications. So it will help them um, prepare for future certifications as well. All right, so a few demos before we actually get your hands on some of these. So this demo right here is, uh, you know, it's totally interactive. What you're seeing the mouse move is something that the student would do. And it's a phishing simulation. So it simulates an email inbox and students get to um, play around with it. So they get to click, check out a few emails and then um, decide whether they think it's good that they could download it, it's safe, or if they think that um, it's a phishing attempt. Um, another one, and we'll check out this one today. This is in the lesson we're doing today. This one is just showing students how they can be tracked. So your mouse movement can be tracked, your clicking can be tracked, your keyboard can be uh, tracked. Um, and you know, students love this one and I think it scares them as well <laughs> because they don't realize how easy this is for someone to basically track your movements. All right, we are going to step into our first lesson. So we're gonna look at two different lessons today. This is the first one. And as Julia mentioned before, you're kind of putting on two hats in this, in this part. Um, and same as, same as me, I'm gonna kind of act like a teacher, but then I'm also you know, still just gonna to talk to you like you guys are teachers as well, right? Um, and same with you, you wanna think of how this is gonna feel if you were a student. Um, are you overwhelmed at any point? Do you think you might uh, be intimidated at any point? Um, is, is, it, is it exciting and you wanna learn more? And then you also wanna be in your teacher lens with your teacher hat. Um, what kind of scaffolding might you need? What kind of activities might you want to add to put your own personality in it? Um, and so forth. Um, let me get back to the page that I want to get to. Here we go. Okay, so I will show you how to get into the course to make sure we're all in the same spot in just a bit. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put on my teacher hat and we're going to do a little bit of um, kind of like a bell ringer opener. Um, so let's share a little information. Some of you know cybersecurity, some of you are new. Why do you think companies collect our data? Let's put this in the chat. So why do companies collect our data, data? Data, it's data, right? Do you guys say data? <laughs> to target ads, yeah, all the time, oh my goodness. Buying patterns, excellent. Yeah, target ads to make more money, to sell it to other companies. Yeah, it's interesting that everyone's saying ads. I think that's what we experience the most, right? You say, you swear, I, I think they're listening to us, right? You say something and then all of a sudden it's on your Facebook uh, ads. <laughs> all right, excellent. Let's go to another question. What information or what type of information do you think is the most important to keep secure? Oh, you guys are such teachers, <laughs> the PII, absolutely. 
social security, right? We don't want identity theft. Financial info. Yes, Debbie, that's the one I'm thinking of. And not just address. The one that scares me the most is like location. And if I have time at the end, I'll show you guys something on your phone that you'll definitely want to get rid of <laughs> because your phone is tracking you. Yeah, excellent, excellent job, guys. All right, so now I wanna make sure you're in the right spot. So um, if you see the sun in your course, you are good, just hold on. If you don't see this sun, I'm gonna show you how to get to it. And somehow, here we go. At the top of your page, now your page might look different than mine, but if you enrolled in the section um, and put in the class code, if you click on my sections, you should see under the student page, Cybersecurity PD Summer. Once you click that, that's gonna bring you to the course, that's gonna bring you to the demo course. And there is one more click after this, which actually, let me just open it into, just in case someone gets lost again. And then once you're in there, you click into the actual course right here, and then you should see the sun. Let me do a little pulse check. If you do see this page with the sun, um, give me a, I guess a yes. Did you guys know how to get to your reactions? Either a yes or a thumbs up, something like that. Okay, cool. Good, good, good. Excellent. All right, awesome. If you are struggling with finding where we are, use that um, cyber worksheet, um, that workbook. It's gonna be more or less like a guide. You don't actually need it at all if you're able to follow where I'm at. But if you get lost, definitely look in there and you'll be able to find any link to where we're at. Okay, so if you see the sun, what we're gonna do is we're gonna click into that first lesson. So we're going into privacy and security. And we're gonna start with the slides. So you should get to a page like this and you have options with our videos. So we definitely have videos, um, you know, it's all with the, with the sound and everything. And students can just play it on their own. Um, if you're doing a self-paced thing, that's really good. If you're doing a flipped um, classroom, you can do that and have them watch the video before class. Um, but what you could do also, and lots of, lots of teachers love to do it this way, is you can use the slides and just teach yourself. And this helps, you know, put your own personality into it. So the button for that is right up there. So if, once you see that, you can click on that slides button. And again, if you get lost and you don't know where we are, look in the workbook and it will um, show you screenshots and links and stuff. And I'm gonna go through these slides kind of as a teacher. So I'll show you an example of some of these slides. So we're gonna go through privacy and security. And I'm not gonna do all of it because um, I know you guys, I know I'm, I'm flipping around. So you guys are, are still teachers. So I'm not gonna go through all of it. But basically I want you to see what the slides look like. So the digital age, obviously things are growing. Um, things are growing even since we made this slide. Like I don't even see TikTok on here, which would be like a huge thing for cybersecurity. So, I mean, they're growing so fast. Like every year, basically we, we could probably throw, I don't know, five to six more things on here. Um, so data privacy and data security, they are a little bit different. Privacy is the appropriate use of your data, right? When people are allowed to see it, when they are not. Security is um, the integrity, confidentiality, confidentiality, and availability of your data. How do we keep it safe? Um, there's a whole lesson that goes into, it's called the CIA, right? Um, you can see those confidentiality, integrity, availability. So there's a whole lesson that goes into the CIA triad. When are people allowed to use, uh, see your data? Who's allowed to see your data? Um, when should they be allowed to see your data? All of these have to do with data security. All right, so let's do a little um, uh, testing for you. Let's see what you guys know. What ensures a strong password? And you probably know a lot of this because now they force you to kind of build strong passwords. So in the chat, what makes a strong password?
Good. <clears throat> All right, long, special characters, uppercase, lowercase, symbols. Yeah, excellent job. I know my sister's strategy is to always just use a password in a different language, <laughs> which I mean, I guess definitely helps, but um, not, not, you know, not foolproof. <clears throat> yeah, excellent. Yeah, you guys know a lot, you guys are pros. All right, so what we have here on the slide is complex passwords containing eight to 20 characters. Um, the longer, the better. I have, we're gonna go through an ex example later on where you can really explore how the length of your password makes a huge difference. Uh, you want to use capital and lowercase letters. You want to use special characters, um, numbers. And a big one is you want to use different passwords for different accounts. So again, you might not think that your um, Pinterest account is of any interest to people. But if it's the same login and password that you use for your bank account, you know, people can steal it and then reuse it. Um, other things. Does anyone use two-factor authentication? It's like it's it's a it's a like a love hate relationship with two factor authentication because it makes it hard for you to log on, uh, but it is really really helpful to avoid other people from logging on. So two factor authentication is basically you can't just sign in from your computer. You need to add in an added layer of security, like they're going to send a um, code to your phone, um, or now they have apps on your phone. Uh, they could call it maybe, and you can use that unique pin. Um, definitely. Definitely suggested to put this in, in um, you know, in perspective. Uh, they could also ask a security question, which is definitely not as strong as the other first two. And password managers, I I know it's not the best one. I think I use like the one that comes with Chrome. I know it's not the best one, but it's definitely convenient. Uh, but password manager is definitely um, another another thing that's that's helpful. So it helps manage and diversify your passwords, so you don't have to remember all of them. The password manager will remember it for you. All you have to do is remember the master password. But again, make sure that one's super duper safe. All right, so these are a little obvious, <laughs> but um, this would be a point, and now I'm flipping and you guys are back to the teachers and stuff. This would be a point where maybe you can give them some examples or you can have them come up with examples as long as they're not sharing their own um, to see who can come up with a you know, password that's pretty strong. Obviously, the second one's stronger. The issue is going to be trying to remember that second one. All right, and here's just another example. So I'm going to go through these a little faster just because I do know that you know some of this. So this is just an example of the slides. Um, secure sites are very important. Does anyone know what part of what's shown right now tells us that that site's safe? So it's HTTPS colon and slash slash. Yeah, very good. It's the S. All right, it's the S. So S means secure, and that's going to make, I mean, we go into a lesson way further on what actually happens. So it's a different port number. It's a different encryption system. Um, if the S is not there, it's not encrypted. So they just send your information. Anyone can read it. Um, so we don't go over that in this one, but that is taught in the course. Um, without it, it's less secure. So you always want to verify the URL. And if you have a good browser, it'll kind of tell you. Um, also avoid lots of pop-ups. One or two are OK and use your best judgment. All right, um, one more thing before we get into some of the lessons, which are the most fun. Uh, phishing is also taught in this chapter um, or this lesson. So a method to gather personal information such as usernames and passwords, it still boggles my mind that people fall for some of these, but it's because the first time you see it, you might not know. Uh, take a look at this one, I've hidden the answer. Does anyone see what makes this suspect? So look at the graphic. Is there anything that you see that might cause you to think this is a phishing email, a fake email? And you can just put your answer in the chat. Yeah. Yeah, that's a tricky one too, right? People might not see that. Or maybe instead of using an L, they'll use like a lowercase one. So it even looks like an L. But yes, PayPal is spelled incorrectly, which means that that is not actually coming from paypal.com. It's coming from paypal.com. All right, so this would be the last of, um, you know, kind of like a summary. So security reminders, use your best judgment, use password best practices, check twice to make sure a website is secure. Uh, be careful when logging onto public computers. I skipped over this part just for timing, um, but that's a huge thing too. And then stay up to date, uh, date on the best web security practices. 
All right, so now when you're in your screen, what I want you to do is um, click on that continue button. So now you're gonna go back to, right, right we've hit the end of the slides and click on the continue button. It should bring up a quiz. I wanna give you a minute or two to explore the quiz and then take it, see how you do. So if you are here, you're good, I'll be quiet. If you cannot find this page, tell me in the chat and I'll help you um, while I'm quiet so you guys can do these three questions. All right, so as you were doing that, I actually took a snapshot so that I can show you what we see as teachers or you, what you'll see as teachers. And um, I blurred everyone's names out, so don't worry. <laughs> but um, I could see how you guys did on the quiz. So this is my snapshot. Um, and uh, Julia will go over this in way more detail later, but I just wanted to pull it up so we can see that um, you can easily see how everyone's doing. So this is actually what I was doing from the teacher side to make sure people were where they're supposed to be. Um, so you can see we have the one working ahead, <laughs> um, but that's fine. <laughs> and then we have, you know, you can see your twos, your ones, your threes. Yellow means they didn't do it yet. Um, zero, I might want to go help this student out. Um, so this is just a quick little snapshot of what I can see as a teacher. But let's go back and see how everyone did. So privacy policy discloses. Tell me in the chat, what'd you guys pick, A, B, C, or D? And again, we kind of skipped over this part just for timing, but I don't know if maybe you guys knew the answer to this one. Yes, and I'm gonna pick the wrong one on purpose just to show you what happens. So when you pick the wrong one on purpose, um, it just kind of gives you um, uh, feedback that helps you with the actual answer. All right, how about number two? Which of the following, which of the following are best practices for having a secure password? This one we went over in length. This one is all of the above, correct, good job. Um, three is a little tougher, especially because we didn't go over it, we skipped that part. But did you guys know what the answer for three would be? All right, looks like everyone's putting in C. Very good. All right, so I wanna show you two ways to navigate now. There's two different ways that you can navigate. One of them is you can click on continue and it's gonna go to the next item. But I wanted to bring up this down here, this little toolbar down here. These circles represent every single assignment. So if you hover over it, it will give you the name of the assignment. So you can skip from you know assignment to assignment very easily with this one down there. So either way, the assignment we wanna to get to is the one just, that's just next. You can just click continue. And it should look like this, Google Privacy Policy Search. And we're not gonna go through this one um, in depth because I wanna to get to the fun simulation ones. Uh, but what this is, is this is a connection item. So we're, we're adding or we're having students kind of explore a site or an article or a video and then have them answer questions about it. So let's get to the fun. Um, you know, the fun uh, exercise that we can do together. So hit continue, you'll go to the next one.
right, and this is just where they put their answers. So again, it's up here this time, which is why I put this graphic up here. So submit and continue. And then I'm gonna pause and just make sure everyone's in the right spot. You should be able to get to, no, that's not right. Okay, here, it's in here. You should be able to get to this one, guess and the password list. Um, give me a thumbs up if you can find this or if you have found it. And if not, let us know in the chat. Um, the link should be in your workbook. All right, cool. I'm seeing some thumbs pop up. Excellent. Jennifer, is, is this um, the continue is on the previous page or do I need to go to the workbook to get to this? I would go, my suggestion would be to go down to the bottom here where the circles are and hover over the one that says guess password list. That would probably be the easiest way instead of trying to hit continue a bunch of times. The link is also in the workbook though, if that's easier too. All right, cool. We're going to explore this together. I'm going to show you or explain what you're seeing because remember, put your student hat on. If they have not coded and they want to look through this, this could get intimidating pretty quickly, right? <laughs> so what this is, is this is a simulation. They do not have to touch this left side at all. Um, there are a few advanced challenges that we offer. If you do happen to have a student who maybe took a computer science course already, um, or if you have those really eager students that want to know about it, but they do not have to touch that at all. Um, what you want to do is just hit the run button. So your green run button. And this exercise is showing us how a password list can help you um, or can help a hacker. You can also open it in a new tab if that's a bigger for you. But how a password list, a password dictionary can help a hacker steal your password. So to play this, we're going to hit start. And you're going to just choose, yours is going to look different than mine. You're going to choose one of the Oh, I got it on the first try. Okay, let me try again. <laughs> okay, so you pick a number and it's gonna tell you how many matching letters there are. And it's just, what it means is there's one letter in that word that is in the same spot as the answer, um, the password answer. So I wanna be quiet and see if you guys can do this. Try, try to play the game once or twice and see if you can match the letter or match the password, find the password and put any questions in the chat if it's confusing. Were you guys ever uh, able to get it? I wanna see if we can get this one. What do you guys think? Help me with this one. So it says one letter is in the right spot. So I guess it could be the S, right? So let's try started. It is not the S. <laughs> um, and uh, apparently it's not the E or the D either. These get me all the time. Let's see, I'm just gonna pick a random one. Let's say it's the H, there's no H, how about U? We're just gonna go with a random one. Nope, nope, I lost. Um, but what this is, is this is showing students, and I don't wanna take too long on that. This is showing students that even if you know just a part of the password, it definitely helps a ton. Um, and we do have, if you've noticed in the workbook, we have advanced challenges. So just watch me for this when you don't have to try it on your own. But what we could do is we could go down, the advanced challenge is telling them to change something. Um, actually, we're not gonna do it on this one. But the advanced challenge does have them change something in the code. So if they do want to, you know, more of a challenge, they can find something in the code and change it, right? Like down here saying word count is 10, you know, we can change that to 20. 
And then when you start it, you're gonna have a much bigger list to guess from, right? Um, oh, I forgot to hit the save button. But it, it's gonna change this for you, which is kind of cool. All right, let's check out the next one. So up here, we're gonna click on next. And I have it open already just for loading reasons. But you should get to the one where it says guess and using an algorithm. All right, now this one's a fun one to play with uh, too. It's not, not much of a game, but it's still fun. So if you hit run, this is gonna basically see how long it takes to um, crack a four digit code. What do you guys use four digit codes for? Anyone use it for your phone? I know I've been told to do a six digit. I have yet to update it. <laughs> I know I should, but the four digit code is not really secure. You'll see how quick it is to, um, to crack it here. So hit the one that says generate code. It's gonna generate a code for you. And then once you hit crack it, it's gonna crack it within seconds. And if you hit see all attempts, it will show you that it literally just tried every single one. So not only is this using an algorithm, but this teaches students about um, brute force. So brute force is where you literally try every single combination. You get very good for you. Yeah, so this time took 282. And then again, we have, um, you know, we have an advanced challenge. If students want to change it, they can change it from doing, um, you know, five digits to doing nine. Um, it does take a lot longer to do it that way, though. So just be careful. But um, there are advanced challenges if students want to kind of mess around with the code. All right, let's go to the next and last one. And then I'll give you some time to um, explore another one. I think this one's my favorite. Oh, I hit the button instead of just going to the next screen. Here we go. All right, so in this one, this is just, if you're interested, this is just JavaScript and it's just a way of guessing a number. So we have a number in there from one to 99. And you might not be able to see this on my screen because sometimes you don't see the, the pop-ups. So you might need to just do this one on your own. Once you hit run code, you should see a pop-up and be able to put a number from one to 99 in there. See how many attempts it takes you to guess the number and let us know in the chat. Oh, you can see the pop-up, okay. Oh good, you beat me, it took me five. <laughs> Nilo, excellent, yeah, connected to computer programming. Yeah, and this, this is brute force, except it's like a, a helpful brute force, you know, you're given hints about it. But if you wanted to increase the difficulty, obviously you can change them in in the max, um, but students can go in here and they can just delete where it says if it's high or low. Um, and that's like our advanced challenge for this one. So literally they would have to go from one to 99 and try it with using group force, which they'd be able to get it, but it might take them a few minutes. But I could definitely see that being fun. <laughs> like, like, like a timing thing in, in like class, like go and then see who gets it first um, and kind of see what strategies they have. All right, I've been talking a lot again. I wanna make sure that you have the, um, uh, the ability to kind of go through the rest of the lesson on your own so that we can come back and I'll show you all the resources and stuff. And I do have an opportunity for you guys to talk to each other. So it's not just me talking and you, you know, watching. So there is an opportunity in a little bit for you to talk to each other as well. Um, but for now, what I want you to do is uh, just go through the rest of the lesson on your own. So the rest of the lesson is, I'll show you, uh, you're going to have an opportunity. It's not this one. It's this one. You're going to have an opportunity to play around with a connection item. And you're going to test some passwords. So down here, you can go and you can test the password. Don't put in your own password in there. They say it's uh, safe. Just don't do it. And um, you can read on the side. It's going to talk you through what kind of passwords to put in there. 
Um, and then after that, you have the cool one that I showed you before, this really cool you can be tracked um, simulation. And once you get there, just stop. So you have two things. You have the password challenge, right? Hit continue, get used to the navigation. And then you have the you can be tracked simulation. So I'll be quiet for a full at least five minutes and then maybe we'll do a break after this. Um, uh, just to let you explore the rest of the lessons, you can come back with any questions.
I totally lost track of time. I think that was about five minutes. <laughs> I'm actually looking in the, um, you know, like that teacher screen that I showed you before. And it looks like a lot of you got to that last, uh, last example. Plus, I want to give you a break. Um, so, you know, before, you know, before it gets too late for a break anyway. Uh, but what'd you guys think? Tell me, tell me some feedback in the chat. Uh, what about the password? What did you notice? What was true about this password? What was the most of the thing that affected this password the most, like the strength? It's a very loaded question. Yeah, very good. Thank you. You got it. <laughs> yeah, longer password. I love doing this with the students because you can literally write like this is a super long password, which is not really secure, but it looks like no one's really going to, you know, hardly get that unless they have like some sort of dictionary. Um, so the length is definitely over everything else. And then how about the you can track? Did you guys know they could do all of this or it was tracking? Another advanced thing could be to have them look at how it's trapping, tracking it, which is totally all in the code. Yeah, good. And then this, you know, I, I, I didn't know they could actually tell your right, you know, your button that you were pressing with. All right, so before the break, I'm gonna give you a break in a second. I wanna show you the resources. So this is in, um, let me give you the link to this, even though it's in the workbook. Uh, you wanna get to this screen. Actually, the link is right here. It is in the workbook. Oh, good, Debbie. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of uh, multitasking you can do basically while you're teaching cybersecurity. There's a lot of um, web development stuff in there. There's a lot of programming. Um, all right, so I want to show you the resources that I used for this lesson. You'll see kind of how I took what was in the lesson plan and I ended up using it with you guys. So this is all of the resources. So if you want to see what I did just for today, you'll want to go find 2.4 which is just the second link in the workbook if you want to you know, get there quicker. But if you want to learn the navigation, just scroll down. You can see this lesson actually has a ton of handouts, which is why I think this lesson is definitely at least a two-day lesson. Um, but it has a ton of handouts that you can use. It has um, uh, the lesson plan, which is probably the number one thing you'll use. So let's look at this lesson plan. I'm going to try to make it a little bit bigger too. Um, I can close this side, which is nice. So make this bigger. There we go. All right, so the lesson plan starts with, you know, like the stuff that lesson plans are all supposed to have. It has the description, it has the objectives, uh, it lists links for all of the activities. If you do happen to have Pro, you can um, print the quiz, which is helpful. All right, I think Jennifer was just having a few um, <laughs> a few uh, computer issues. So yeah, we'll, we'll come back and get started there. So let's take a break for five minutes. So we'll come back at five minutes after the hour. All right, we'll see everyone in five minutes. Thank you.
All right, everyone. Thank you so much for bearing with us with our technical issues. Um, we are gonna hop into. Oh, I'm back if you want. Second. <laughs> oh, perfect. Okay, everyone, awesome, you awesome. Jennifer. <laughs> my, uh, All right, I'm the culprit. Yeah, my, let's go my, through our second lesson. My eight-year-old daughter um, unplugged the internet, so there's that. <laughs> so that's what happens. Happens um, all the time. <laughs> all right, so we did our five minute right. break. Okay. Yes, we're all good to go. Did we go through any resources or no? We just did the break. We just did the break, so that's where we left off. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so I was showing you guys the resources. Sorry about that. Um, like I said, in this one, we have a bunch of handouts. Um, and this part of the lesson, I think, is where teachers would, like I would live as a teacher here, because it has a whole bunch of planning notes. So these are like optional before lesson type things that you can look into. Uh, so it's letting you know, like I said before, that it's a longer list, uh, lesson. You might need to split it into two class periods. Um, then also this teaching and learning strategies, like all the stuff that I put in the work guide or that I asked you, like the advanced challenges, those can be found here. So not only like you're not just sending the student to the example, to the simulation and expecting them to know what to do. So we have directing um, questions here and, you know, advanced challenges, and it's all here in the lesson plan. Um, as well, it does give you prior knowledge. Now with cybersecurity, there's a lot, there's not much that builds on things. Um, some of it does, but if it does, that would be listed there. Um, it's a one-stop shop. So your lesson plans, your slides are here. And then we also have these discussion questions. So if you see, these look a little familiar, right? Why do you think companies collect our data? So I used that one this morning. Um, what information is most important to keep secure? I used that one. And then there's a few more that you can use maybe as an exit ticket or something like that. Uh, all right, what I wanna do now, and we're gonna get you started on a second lesson. Okay, I see someone can't hear anything. I hope that's not me. Uh, Okay, cool, excellent. Okay, people, someone, someone's hearing me. Uh, what I wanna do is I wanna give you guys a few minutes to go through a lesson together. So this is when we get to talk to each other. You guys get to um, hang out in breakout rooms and kind of go through how you might envision yourself using this. So now we are total teacher hats. Um, I'm gonna have you go through this lesson. Let me uh, get my scale back on. So I'm gonna have you guys kind of explore this lesson called comparing operating systems. This is one that students love, teachers love. Uh, it's got a lot of simulations in there. Uh, so I will give you the lesson link. I will give you the um, lesson plan link. And then I'm also gonna give you a Padlet link. And this is all gonna be in your workbook. So the Padlet link is where after you discuss how you might use each piece, you can put like the top ideas in here. So like, here's just an example. So the video and slides, I would use the slides and talk through them with the students. Um, someone else might wanna put, I would use, oh, if you didn't see what I did there, um, you, you might know Padlet, but if not, you hit the plus. Um, I would do flipped learning with them and then just X out of it and that would pop up. Um, so let me make sure before I send you off into breakout that you definitely have that Cyber PD workshop. Do we have the, the link for that, does anyone have it ready? Uh, so the work or the workbook, because all three of these links that you'll need are in there at the bottom. And it looks like some people are in there already. Excellent. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna put you in breakouts, give you a chance to go through that lesson um, together, kind of explore it together and talk about how you might want to facilitate it in your, in your class. Uh, is there anything else we need? No, click on that link and then we'll set up the breakouts in a second. Let me know if there's any questions before I send you all off. All right, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna open the breakout rooms. Just a reminder, you're going to need to um, click, once they will pop up, you'll have to click to join your breakout room so that you can chat with your, um, your teachers. And we will come back together in about 10 minutes. I will send a message um, once we're ready to come back. All right, here we go.
All right, it seems like we have some participants coming back in. So we're gonna go over some of these ideas on this Padlet just as soon as these breakout close up. All right, it looks like everyone's back. Jennifer, did we want to take a look at these ideas? Looks like we have some great thoughts. Tablet. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got a lot of good uh, suggestions here. Um, this one says maybe separate class to pair up teams and summarize each you know, operating system on a poster, which is pretty cool. Um, and then uh, let's see what else we've got. So uh, we've got to uh, choose a visual way to show similarities and differences. I would also ask them to try different tasks and find elements and document the steps needed. Um, so to add a little bit more in there. Uh, the simulations, they definitely need to, and this is part in the planning notes, uh, you'll definitely want to look into them first because you'll have to facilitate them for sure. So any of these simulations, you'll definitely want to make sure you look at before you know going over with the students. So today might be a little tough to kind of understand them fully. Um, and then this right here did not address why we use operating systems. It's actually the lesson before. So that's why um, I promise it's in there. So there's two, there's at least two lessons on these operating systems. Um, it's always hard to just pick one out of nowhere. There is a handout too. It looks like we didn't get to the handouts, but there are handouts available as well. So I wanted to at least show you one of these where students um, in this one specifically, students can look at the different data revolving around you know, operating systems and which ones are better or more used or more popular and stuff like that. Um, and kind of, you know, this is almost like a interdisciplinary thing. So it's like graphs and stuff like that, but still looking at operating systems, um, supercomputers uh, and more, you know, more along those lines as well. Where did you go to get the handouts again? It is, I mean, there, it, the probably the easiest way to do it is it's in the lesson plan, just under handouts. And then in here, there's other, you know, suggestions of how to start a class. So, I mean, if you have not taught cybersecurity before, which was a, a large chunk of you, you really like our suggestion would be to go through our course, kind of like with student lens, uh, and just, you know, make sure you're ahead of the students, make sure that you start the course in the summer, you know, even if you don't get through all of it by the end of the summer, as long as you're ahead of the students, you should be, you know, plenty, plenty good to, uh, you know, give them the information as well, because everything's in here. Uh, I think that's all I've got. I'm going to stop sharing and hand it over to Julia. Let me know if there's any questions in the chat. And thank you so much. All right, sounds great. So we went through a lot of awesome resources for our cybersecurity course. And now we're going to take a look at some of those general tools that we have available on CodeHS to help you regardless of what course you're teaching, help you manage your students, manage your classroom, and make sure that you are um, um, bringing this content to your students as effectively as you can. So we were able to see some tips and things that, um, that you can use in that cybersecurity course. This course, again, is, is very different from our other courses where there's all these simulations, there's less programming, there's a lot of these um, cool other um, applications that students are using. So um, some of the resources um, like grading are going to be a little bit different in this course versus a programming course. Um, so let's take a look at our tools and resources. And you will be able to, um, you're going to receive the, this slide deck as well as this recording after our session today. And you'll notice in the slide deck, there are a lot of slides with information and photos and some GIFs about these tools that we're going to talk through. But instead of going through them this way in slides, I'm going to go through them on our CodeHS platform. So let's hop over to that. So here I am right 
um, where you, what you're going to see, you're going to see a screen very similar to this when you first log into CodeHS. And if you have taught other courses with CodeHS before, you'll see some other courses here. You may see um, your demo section that you, you um, joined today, your, your cyber demo session, section. Um, but this is the main page that has a lot of information for you. Um, today, I'm going to go over just kind of a whirlwind of a bunch of tools that are available to you. So I want to remind you, if I go over something and you're like, this is really cool, I want some more information, or how did she find that, where did she go? Make sure you have that parking lot doc open because any questions that you write in there, we're gonna be able to send you direct links and give you all of the information that you need right there. So um, on this main page, I just want to make one quick um, distinction between a course and a section. So the course, is the actual content, the assignments that you are going to be bringing to your students. A section is like the period. It's like the class, um, like period two cybersecurity. Um, you can make multiple sections of the same course. So if you're gonna be teaching three different sections of cybersecurity next year, you can make um, have your cybersecurity course and then um, have your three different sections of students. So you can have period one, period two, period three. So let's hop in. What if we, we're gonna take a look at this first section. So if you click on your section and you'll see on my screen, I have lots of tabs up here um, because I want to make sure we minimize the time that things need to load. So when we open this demo section right here, it's gonna bring us to a page that will show all of the students in my section and give a lot of different options for those students. So if you just created a section, right? After this, maybe you're so excited, you, you go into courses, you create a section for your cybersecurity class next year, you won't have any students in there yet. They're, they will have to join your section using that code and that link that you um, used this morning, the same way that you used um, before to join our demo section, that's how they will join your class as well. Once you have students in here, there's a lot of options we have. So there are three things that I want to focus on on this main page. The first one is this announcements. So if you want to give all of your students in a section um, some general information, you can always send them an email. But as I learned this year, students are not really great at email. <laughs> if I want to make sure that students are getting the information that I want to give them, you can use this announcements button and it will open this page where you can write any announcement that you want to give to your students be as soon as they log into CodeHS. So it will pop up for them. The, you'll, you know that they have seen that information as long as they went into CodeHS that day. So once you publish that announcement, that section that you've chosen will receive that information. That's a really nice way of communicating with your students. Another way to communicate with them individually is using this conversation button right over here. So you have one of those buttons for every student in your class. And this is a really nice way for you to just check in with a certain student. It's not linked to any specific exercise or activity in the, in the course. So this is just general. If you say, hey, I noticed you were absent last week. Do you wanna come in for lunch to, to make up any of the work? You click on this conversation button. It will open a chat with that specific student. So you can have that back and forth information with just that student, regardless of where they are in the course. The last button here that I want us to take a look at is this attendance, which was really, really helpful in this virtual world, um, but also will be helpful as you're trying to manage students in your classroom, or you might be in a scenario where you have students in and out of the classroom next year. So our attendance button will bring up the list of students. It will fill in, populate when they first were active, their most recent activity and the total time that they spent on CodeHS. You can also click on this weekly attendance and this will give us for that specific week that's chosen, which students logged in on which days. 
So it's the summer, no one's logging in, everyone's in the pool. But during the school year, you can see, okay, well, um, you know, Amelia was absent. She didn't log in on Monday. Um, this is an, an easy way for you to just check in with those students and, and where they are. All right. The next thing I want us to take a look at, and let me just actually open up my chat and make sure I try to. Okay, perfect. All right. So um, blocks. So I think, oh, for block schedules, I think, Kimberly, I think that's what you mean. Like if you only see students on Tuesday, Thursday, I don't think that's available right now, but that's a good feature. Um, and I'm going to show you at the end of our, our tool section, how you can communicate with CodeHS to um, offer your feedback or your thoughts or things that you are, um, you know, not sure if you can do. And if you can't, my favorite thing about CodeHS is that we really listen and we're coming up with new features every day on the site because of what teachers are looking for. All right. Um, so let's hop over to our course settings page. So if we hover over, if we click on our course settings, all right, we will see lots of different options here. And the one that I want us to focus on right now is our due date and access controls. So if I click there, then for this section, I am given a lot of options to make sure that my, my class is going to be taught the exact way that I want it to be. So you're gonna see a list of the um, units or the modules in the course. You can also expand this list to see a list of all of the lessons in that module. You can expand even further to see every single item in that lesson, in that module, in the course. So you have so much um, control over how students access material. So the first thing that you can do is use this due date. Maybe you wanna set a due date for the entire module. You wanna say, I want everyone next month, you're gonna have a month to work through Carol. Next month, I want all of it to be due. Maybe you want to be a little bit more specific. You wanna say, okay, I'm gonna set a due date for just this lesson. Maybe by the end of today, I want everyone to complete this lesson. Or um, you can also lock a, a lesson or a module or an activity until you want students to work on it. So I know, and we all know that we even saw in uh, Jennifer's demo, some students are just gonna wanna work ahead, right? And maybe in some cases that's fine, but there might be some scenarios where you're going over an example problem and it's really important that everyone focuses with you. So you might want to lock this activity, this um, lesson until you are done going over that example so that students aren't able to continue working through um, that material while you still are focusing on the example. So locked will put a, um, a padlock symbol over it. They won't be able to access it, but they will see that it's still in the course. They will see that it is um, something that is going to um, be available to them at some, at some point. If you use locked, you'll have to go back yourself and set it to available um, once you're ready. You can also schedule when you want this to be available. So if you choose scheduled, you can set a time that this lesson will open and a time that it will close. And you could do that for each individual activity. You can do that for the lesson. You can do that for the module. So there's a lot of options here for controlling when students are getting information. There's, that's a little bit different, these access controls from assigned. So what assigned means is say that I had a set of, this is a JavaScript course. Say I had a group of um, JavaScript students coming in that I know already have taken some programming before. So this programming with Carol is a really good introduction, but I don't think they're going to need that introduction. I can unassign these Carol modules. And this means instead of it being a locked symbol in their course, students won't even see that these existed. They won't ever pop up for students. So they don't even know that they were ever there. So this is one really good way for you to make sure 
that you can have um, your set your class up the same the the way that you want it to be um, to look. And there are a lot of customization options on CodeHS even past this. If you want to mix different modules from different courses together, if you want to move them around, change the order, there's all of these different options. We're not going to get into those today, but if you're interested in that, you can send a um, message in the question in the um, question document, and we'll get you a link to some helpful resources. We also are going to have an experience tools um, session later in the summer. So if you're interested in that, that would be a really awesome uh, workshop to attend. All right. It looks like there are some questions in here, but thanks, Mr. Um, I do think, Mr. Correct me. I mean, you can help out in the in the um, chat as well. I do think there's a way for you to set to have these settings um, be applied to multiple sections at one time. Okay, awesome, perfect. Thanks, Mr. Okay, so the next thing that I want us to take a look at is our grade book and our progress settings. So if we go to progress, we can view progress in a bunch of different ways. So let's first look at view progress by assignment. Oh, I think I, yeah, that's okay. All right, progress by assignment. So here we see a key with all of our colors because in this um, table, you're just seeing a bunch of different colors. This key, if you hover over each color, it will show you what that color means. And this is by every single activity. So this tells me which, where Amelia is in the course, right? She's going through, she has completed a lot of activities. There might be some other students who maybe yellow means they, they opened it, but they haven't submitted. So maybe Beyonce over here is having a little trouble finishing this, this lesson. So I might wanna go back and check in with Beyonce to see if she's a little stuck and she needs some help. Um, there are a lot of different ways to view the progress here um, and some additional options with quizzes and time. But I'm gonna show us another way to view those in the gradebook. So if we go over to gradebook um, on the top panel over here, we'll see those same colors and your key is still here. And you'll see all of the items that are in the course. You can view it by a module or a lesson or however you want to configure your view here. But what if you are saying, I don't really want to grade the videos. I don't want students to be getting 10 points just for watching the videos. Well, you can go over to this configure button and now you can choose what types of items you want to include in the gradebook and which ones you don't. Um, there are a lot of other settings here. So I definitely um, recommend you take a, a look at that to see how you want your gradebook set up there. And this is, um, there's another um, feature here that there is, there are multiple ways to grade in CodeHS. Oh, looks like my, uh, this is why I had everything uh, loaded up before. Um, so there are a lot of different ways to grade. One way is to go into review, but I, I want to focus on a um, different way to grade. So if we click on the actual link of an activity, this is an exercise I can tell by my little pencil here. And let's see what, what we're gonna get here. We'll load, load up my info. So it looks like it's not loading my info, of course. So um, there is a way for you to get right into fast grade here. You can also get into fast grade from review. But once this populated my information, I would be able to see when this student, each student started, how long they spent. So this is an alternative to that time tracking in the progress section. You're gonna see for this specific activity, how long they spent on there. And that information is really helpful, both to see if students are, maybe it's taking them a really, really short time, which might throw up a little cheating flag in your brain. Um, if they just copy and paste it from someone else. Or if you have a student who's taking 
triple the time as everyone else, that might be a student you wanna check in with and make sure that they aren't stuck, that, that they are understanding the content here. The status will show if they completed it, if they submitted it, if they reviewed it, and then your score right here. So the thing that I love about this page more than going into our fast grade is that you can see all of the submissions for this, um, this one activity. So if we go to fast grade from review and let's see if this will load up. No, yeah, it's, it's having a little issue with my Zoom. Um, if we go into fast grade from here, I will just get a mix of a bunch of different assignments and my brain to grade them will be going from one assignment to the other, to the other, to the other. But if we get to it the other way from the grade book and the assignment link, you'll see only those assignments that were submitted. So you can just grade one after another and you know the correct answer, you know the feedback that you wanna give. There's a lot of tools that we have available to um, give feed, make giving feedback a lot easier and a lot more efficient. All right. So now let's head over to resources because especially for this, um, this cybersecurity course, our resources are gonna be so, so helpful. So there are two different ways to get to resources and they will both look a little bit different. So one way is on the main page, when we were on our main page, we clicked into our section where we have all our students, there's a resources button up here. If we click that resources button, we're gonna see the resources for the course the same way that um, Jennifer was showing earlier. So you have your syllabus linked up here, you have your lesson plans for each lesson. You have the handouts um, that are associated with this. And our handouts will have both student and teacher versions for all of them. So you don't have to worry about um, knowing all the right answers without, without being told them. Um, so you have your answer keys in there. You have lots of different types of handouts that will um, be able to provide some offline activities for students. You can go right into the editor to see what these um, look like. You have the re references for every solution. So anything that, um, any activity in the course where there is a solution, you will be able to access that solution right, right on your, your resources. And that is whether you're free or pro, every teacher has access to those solutions. The problem guides are a little bit different. Those are gonna give the solution, but it's also going to have some frequently asked questions and, and motivation. Why are we doing this activity? So those are a little bit different. So you have a lot of resources right on this page from that blue button. But if instead we click resources on the left-hand panel, which the left-hand panel and the top panel are um, have a lot of similar links. So you can decide where you want to, how you want to get to these things. Um, if we click on resources here, you're gonna see this layout over here. And this is going to show you again, all your handouts, all your problem guides, your lesson plans. Um, you have your syllabi here. Another thing that I really like about this page is you have this first week resources. So it's summer, we're all thinking, you know, I, what are we gonna do for the year? But more importantly, what are we gonna do right when our students come back into our classroom? How do we make sure that our classroom is gonna be um, set up in a way that is going to um, make them feel supported and connected? So these first week resources are a bunch of CodeHS um, developed ideas that you can use that might, might, may or may not have anything to do with computer science. So these are some really good ideas for um, what you can do uh, on that first week back with your students. All right, and the last thing that I want us to take a look at is this course catalog. So if you are on your main CodeHS page and you click on my courses, you'll see you might have a really long list here of all your courses. You can click on view course catalog and in another tab, it will open this page. So we were, we've been talking today about cybersecurity, but even Jennifer during her, um, her lesson, she, or her overview of the course, she told us there's an advanced cybersecurity course as well. So if I want to look 
what cybersecurity courses are offered from CodeHS, there are a bunch of different options here. So we have different versions based on the length of the course. Is it a semester long, a year long? Here's that advanced cybersecurity course. So we have a lot of different options. We also have some courses that are developed for specific states. So if you are teaching in a state where you have um, computer science standards already passed, check and see if we have any courses available. We've been um, creating lots and lots of them. Um, so this is a really awesome page to just take a look and see what options there are. You can look by language, by um, middle or high school. We also have hour of code activity. So those are just like shorter mini units. Interdisciplinary is something that I love. If you are someone who teaches computer science, but also teaches a different, um, a different subject, you might wanna find a way to bring computer science into your math class or your science class. So there's a lot of different options on this course catalog page. And the very last resource that I'm gonna go over that I remember because someone had, had that question before, in our toolbox, you have a lot of options, but I want us to take a quick look at this orange section support. So there is a very quick way that you can contact us right here. If you are going through our content and you notice something wrong or something isn't working the way that you thought, or you're going through and you're like, I really wish that you had a way to do this. Maybe we already do. There are so many things that exist on our site that um, are all made to help you. So use this contact us and let us know what, what you're thinking, what your issues are, if you have any feedback. Um, and our support is awesome. Always looking at those things to make improvements to our site. I also wanna direct you to this knowledge base because Though you can send us an email and our response times are awesome, um, maybe you're like, well, I just want to see if the answer is already out there. If you go into this knowledge base, you'll have so many articles that have been written by our support team to help you find what you need. So like we were talking about customizing your own course, you can go into um, knowledge base and search customization, and I'm sure you'll find a lot of helpful articles to get started. So these are two really awesome um, ways that you can communicate with CodeHS throughout the entire year. All right, so let's hop back over to our, awesome, to our deck. So we just went through so many different tools um, and we have even more ways that you can communicate and engage with CodeHS. So one of them is becoming a CodeHS certified educator. We have a program where you can apply to be a certified educator. Um, if you want more information on that, send um, a message in the parking lot or in the chat and we can send you some more information there. We also have a very active Facebook group. So if you just search for Code HS educators um, on Facebook, you will find that. We can also drop the direct link into the chat so you can have a really nice way to engage with other people who may be teaching the same thing or maybe in a similar scenario to you. Um, there's a lot of people who use CodeHS and then develop their own content. Um, and being able to communicate with other teachers is so invaluable. We also are gonna have so many um, more workshops this summer. We have like five a week going on right now. Um, so take a look at all of the workshops that are on our um, PD slash free site. We're gonna drop that link in the chat as well. Um, and as I said before, if, if you are someone who has been using CodeHS for a while and you want to know what those, um, how, to, how to do that customization, how to use those advanced tools, um, there's an experienced CodeHS teacher um, workshop that's coming up. And if you are brand new and you're like, oh my gosh, a lot of this went over my head. I just, I need to know how to get started. We also have a new CodeHS teacher workshop available as well. So definitely check that out. And if someone could drop those links in the chat, that would be awesome. All right, we also have a survey. We wanna know your thoughts. How did, did we, were we able to answer all your questions today? Were we able to make you feel more confident in using the 
the resources and the content available on CodeHS. So this is going to be found at codehs.com slash workshop survey. Thank you, Joni, for dropping the, the Facebook link in there. Um, so if you could take this um, survey and just give us you know, a, a little bit of feedback about how this went today, that would be awesome. Thanks, MR. And the last thing before we finish up, um, if you need a certificate um, of completion for today's workshop, you can get that at codehs.com slash cyber dash certificate. And this is just a short Google form where you can give us your email. Make sure that your email is correct because I have gotten some um, sent back and I wanna make sure that you get this if you need it. So cyber dash certificate, certificate, you'll be able to put in your email and by tomorrow you should receive that sent straight to your email. All right, that was a lot of information. <laughs> Does anyone need any, um, does anyone having any trouble or needing any other links or information, you can throw it in the chat. Um, and that parking lot, if you asked a question and you got a response that you wanna be able to revisit, um, that document will be available for you. So you can revisit that and have that link um, to, to revisit at a later date. All right, awesome. Thank you everyone so much for joining us and we hope to see you again at another workshop. Have a great day and a great summer.